Hey, what's up guys? Chris here. In this tutorial series, we are going to be building an expense income recording API so users can come and be able to record their income and expenses. All right, so for us to be able to do that, you are going to need to build up an authentication system. So we'll have users register, we'll have them log in, we'll have them change their password if they forget, we'll have them verify their email and all that fun stuff. So right here, we'll have an endpoint that will enable a user to refresh their token. So if you come to think of it, the way token authentication works is you log in, you get the token, you use that access token, and then when it expires, maybe the front end can log the user out. But with a refresh token, the front end can actually reach out to the back end and refresh this token in the background such, they, such that the user keeps access. Okay, so we'll implement that. So from there, then we will enable users to sign in and then create their records, they will be able to create read updates, expenses, do that for their income, and then we will provide some endpoints to give some data that can easily be visualized, like on the front end, like using charts. All right, so after that, we will deploy the application, and from then, then we will, of course, document it. So for example here, you can see that this is a Swagger documentation. If you're not familiar with that, basically it's a tool that allows us to construct API documentation is really easy. We we'll create this UI such that now if, if you finish like building the API and give them give it away, someone can actually come in here. Let's say you have someone up on the front end and they can see like the models you have, the validations you're enforcing, and so they can know how to enforce them on the front end. Yeah, so this this always comes in handy. This documentation actually also can provide a way for people to test out the API. For example, here. If I click here, you can see more details like what the backend will expect. And here yeah, you can try it out. So if I click try it out, you can see that this is a register endpoint. We can provide an email, username and password, and then we can try it out basically. So when I do that, notice that I get a 201, meaning that then I get a user created, the new created user. If I try to do it again, you see I get a 400, I get these errors. Yeah, so it always comes in handy. It can do the job, the testing job for, for you if if you're testing out the API. All right, so sounds good and all. So after registering the user, we'll be able to send them an email, which they can use the, the, the code we send them to come and verify. So the user token we send them. Actually, let me try it out here. So from here, let me use an email that actually exists. So, Chris. All right, so let's try this one. Click execute, and then the user is created. And notice how fast the responses come. Even when in the background we are doing things like sending an email, this is kept like really fast. The UI is kept like really fast. So I'll show you some techniques you can use to do that. Now, if I go to my email, you can see that we have a new email. So. This one gives us a token that we can use to, to verify our account. So I'm gonna copy the token, since this is an API, I'm gonna copy the token and then right here, so we have this endpoint to verify an email. So if I click on it and go to try it out, you can see that we can pass a parameter. So here, I can put the token and then click execute. So when I do that, you see we get account activation successful, meaning that now this account is successful and can be used to login. All right, so now if we go to the login endpoint, click try it out. So I use my email and we'll create a custom user model on, on, with Django so we can allow users to use emails to login. So here, if I use that email, click execute. Now you can see this is not working. So let's see, email, Chris Turin. Oh, this should be a Chris, sorry about that. So let's try again. All right, so you can see that now we log in, we get a 200, and then we get some few things. One of them is the email, the username, and then the tokens. So notice how tokens is actually an object that contains two values, which one of them is a refresh, and another one is the access. So on the front end, the user would have, on the front end, would have to save both of these such that when this expires we can refresh it using this without having to log out a user.
which always comes in handy for the user experience. So once we log in, now we can be able to create, we can, once we log in, we can be able to now start creating expenses. So I'm gonna copy the access token because it's gonna be needed. I'm gonna copy it out. And now if I come and collapse this, let's say I want to get all my expenses. If I click there, and then click try it out. So we are, we are going to paginate the API. For example, here you can see we can we need to fetch by page. So if I put one, you can see that authentication credentials are not provided. And then notice that all our errors come in a key errors and all our successful responses come in a key data. So I will be showing you how you can, can use the renderer classes in the REST framework to construct really consistent responses which always like makes it easy to implement on the front end. So here, I'm going to come to authorize, and then here, we are going to set up the, the documentation to accept, to accept like JWT authentication, such that users can come here and then test it out. So if I come back to the expenses, click execute, you can see that we get an empty, we can get, we get a result, 200, and then we see the count, the, the pagination, links, and then the results array, which is empty at the moment. So let's try to create some expenses. So if I go to post and then try it out. So here we need to, of course, this is, this is all validated. If I try to execute, you can see that we see the amount is not valid because it should be, it should be an actual number. So if I put like 3,000, 300,000, try execute. You can see that it gets created. We get the data key and then these details. All right, so if I do this for more times, you should be able to see that now if we go to our endpoint to get all, click execute, you see that we get all our expenses and then it's all paginated, they are pagination links. All right, so it's gonna be almost the same for the other endpoints, especially the income one. Yeah, so we can get one, delete one, update certain fields of it. All right, so it's gonna be almost similar. And then here we'll be building out our statistics endpoints to give the user some data that you can graph on the front end, which I think we will be building in the in the future. All right, so we're going to go ahead and, and start building this. All right, so I'm here in my terminal. The first thing we're going to need to make sure we have is Python. So to make, to check, you can run Python slash version. So you will notice that I have Python 2.7, but if I run Python 3 dash version, you can see that now I have Python 3.7.7. So this is what you are going to be using. So the first thing you're going to need to do, since you have Python 3, you are going to create a virtual environment using the virtual ENV module. So Python 3 ships with virtual ENV. It's a, it's a, it's a tool in the standard library that, that can enable us to create virtual environments. We are not going to be using things like PyEnv or Keep aim. We are going to just stick to this, stick to the basics. Before we do that, I'm gonna create a folder here, make that. I'm gonna call it Django apps. Then I'm gonna cd into Django apps. And in here, I'm going to use Python 3 to create a virtual environment. So Python 3 minus M, and then we use virtual env. And then we give the virtual environment name. This is where like all our project files will be stored. So I'm gonna call it vim. All right, so that creates a virtual environment. So in here, we need to actually activate it, which we can do by doing source vim bin activate. So when we do that, you can see that now it gets activated. You can see it from here. So now we need to install Django. So when we, we create a virtual environment, it actually sets up pip. So if we run pip slash version, you can see that we have pip. So now we can use pip to install Django. All right, so once we are done here, now we can use Django to create a Django project. So we can do Django admin starts project. I'm gonna call it income expenses API. Oh, should be start project. Start project. Project. All right. Okay, so if we do an LS, you can see that we have 
the Django project created. So I'm gonna cd into the Django project. So cd income expenses. If I do an ls, you can see that you have access to the manage.py. So here, you can run the Python manage.py. If I doing Python, so manage.py, then we want to run run server. So this sets up our server. If I click on the link, you can see that we have Django installed. Everything is up and running. So the next one, we'll start by creating our custom user model. So I'm gonna be pausing the video here. If you, you haven't subscribed to the channel, I recommend you subscribe just so you can keep in the loop as we post new videos. I'll see you guys in the next one.